Let's talk about mitochondria and light. Let's specifically talk about infrared light, red light, and blue light on our mitochondria. So many of us in modern day times are inundated with this very narrow spectrum of blue light that we get from our screens, from our computers, our phones. This light is just a small sliver of that bigger band of natural blue light that we get from the sun. When we go outside, we have a wide range of frequencies that are being emitted from the sun. We are exposed to ultraviolet B, ultraviolet A. We're exposed to the full spectrum of visible light, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. We are enveloped in infrared energy, near infrared, mid infrared, and far infrared. And and this is something to keep in mind because indoors, in modern life, we are often exposed to just a very narrow sliver of that blue light. You could say that we are inundated with blue light, but we're starving for red and infrared light. Our incandescent and halogen bulbs that used to be dominant in indoor living now are a rarity and have been replaced by these LED lights with all only a very small sliver of that blue light. And so when we're talking about mitochondria, we need to be mindful that mitochondrial function has been associated with health and disease, right? Douglas Wallace and many other researchers have found that you can associate mitochondrial function with every modern disease there is out there. Any dip we see in mitochondrial function can lead to symptoms and disease onset. And Douglas Wallace has done a wonderful job in the research showing that, in fact, these disease states of modern day life have been associated with a decrease in mitochondrial function. Mitochondrial function is so important to our health. And when we come back to thinking about how we're living day in and day out, inundated with this narrow band of blue light, it can actually cause our mitochondria to not work as efficiently. That narrow band of blue light, 420 nanometers specifically, is absorbed by the porphyrin in our mitochondria. And it tells our mitochondria to decrease their function. It tells our mitochondria to not metabolize sugar as well, right? We see an increase in blood sugar when people are exposed to this narrow band of blue light that we see coming from our screens. It also can have an effect of, on our mood, increasing depression and anxiety. So you have this association with metabolic issues as well as mood issues from that spectrum of modern light, that 420 nanometer light that is picked up by the porphyrin in our mitochondria. And so nanometers is just a term that is used to describe the length of the wavelength of light. When we're talking about light and the spectrum of light, we're talking about whether that wavelength is long or short. And we can really and that's measured in nanometers. And when we're looking at the visible spectrum over in the ultraviolet light that we can't see into that violet and blue range of visible light that we can see, those are shorter wavelengths of light. And through that visible spectrum over into the red and the infrared that comes after that, again, that we can't see, those are longer wavelengths of light that actually penetrate deeper into the skin. So this narrow band of blue light that's coming from our screens, it can increase our blood sugar and possibly lead to metabolic issues or mood issues. It also can cause damage in the mitochondria, right? It can damage the structure of the mitochondria. And we know how important our mitochondria are to our overall health. Now, if we switch over to this, these spectrums of red and infrared light that we are actually deficient in, right? Those halogen bulbs, those incandescent bulbs being outside in natural light is rich in red and infrared light. And those bulbs that used to be dominant in our indoor lighting had some fraction of red and infrared light. And it is a 
abundant in our outdoor lighting, right? It is abundant in the light that's being emitted from the sun. And this red and infrared light seem to be working on complex four of the electron transport chain. Remember, there are four protein complexes in the chain. The fifth complex is ATP synthase. That turns and it pulls a proton into the inner space to create ATP. And we, we really want efficient properly functioning mitochondria for our overall health and how those electrons are tunneled through that electron transport chain are really important. They help maintain that proton force, right? So we have that little jelly bean mitochondria. There's so many of them in any given cell, most of all in our retinal cells, but our heart, our brain also have lots and lots of mitochondria in them, but they're are in almost every cell in our body, right? And these little mitochondria have an outer membrane and inside that they have an inner membrane. And in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane of the mitochondria are a bunch of hydrogens, are a bunch of protons. And we really want a nice buildup of those protons. And as those electrons tunnel down that chain, they pull protons into that inner membrane space. And as that buildup of protons is increased by those electrons going down the chain, then it builds up this pressure and those protons go down that final ATP synthase to create ATP. And that fourth protein complex, that cytochrome C oxidase. We see that red light is possibly working on making that very efficient. And we see that from research out of Russia. We also see research saying that that red and infrared light might be decreasing the viscosity of the water in the inner membrane space, helping that fifth ATP synthase rotor move faster, right? Decreasing the viscosity, allowing that rotor motor to spin and pull a proton in to create ATP. Uh, there's another theory out about oxygen, but it's fascinating to think how light is impacting our mitochondrial health, our overall health because of that, and to think of what we are being enveloped in as far as light spectrums in our modern day living really dominant in that narrow band of blue light that causes our mitochondria not to work as efficiently, causes damage to the mitochondria versus that red and infrared light that we don't see in our modern lighting that helps our mitochondria work very efficiently, creating ATP and systemic health, right? Our mitochondria communicate over an entire body. They are able to shuttle electrons and energy throughout the body. So our lighting environment is crucial to our mitochondrial health. And this is as easy as blocking some of that blue light that we get from our modern day devices using a red light screen or a night mode, using blue light blocking glasses, and going outside, balancing that indoor lighting with outdoor lighting that is rich in infrared light, rich in red light. Anytime the sun is up, we are going to be enveloped in infrared light and it doesn't have to be direct sunlight. When we're sitting in the shade, that infrared light is being reflected off the leaves of the tree or the blades of grass. Anytime we're outside, we are completely enveloped in this nurturing, nourishing infrared light and it is foundational to our mitochondrial health. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like this content, subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for joining me.